What's up, buddy? Nothing, what's up? Not too much. So, Life 22 here today with uh, Matt Stayer from Stayer's Greenhouse. And, uh, yeah, uh, third interview of the series. I'm just going to pick your brain. What is, uh, you find out your experience with the farmer's market and uh, go, then go into a little bit about Stayer's Greenhouses. Okay. So. Um, I've been doing the market for probably five, six years now. Okay. It's, it's been a good deal. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to see everybody. And it's nice like when it starts up this time of year, you start seeing the familiar faces again, which is always cool. Right. Cool. Um, you were you were on the board for a while, right? Yep. I do, this is my first year off the board. Oh yeah. Nice reprieve, right? Yeah, it is. It's kind of a nice little break. Yeah. It takes a little bit of the stress off. Not that there was a ton of stress, but yeah, it makes it nice to just show up and oh, well, it's there's okay. always a million things going on and it's just right. Yeah. So trying to keep that slack from falling down, right? <laughs> and it's everybody's job, and some people pick up more than the others. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Um, but I mean, everybody pitches in when they need to here, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. It's a very nice community yeah. of vendors, I think. Cool. Um, well, tell us a little bit about Stairs. Um, my parents bought the greenhouse probably nine years ago, I'm going to say. Okay. Um, I've been back in town, I think, seven. Okay. Um, helping out down there. And we, we plant most everything ourselves. Um, so it's all locally raised, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, most of it we start from seed and go from there. Cool. So, uh, any techniques or anything like that? Just uh, all, all greenhouse. Uh, I know there's different terms being thrown around. High tunnel is different than a greenhouse. I'm, I'm learning myself. So everything we do is greenhouse. Um, basically, we've got in the front, which is our retail area, we've got gutter to gutter connects, which. The greenhouse doesn't come down to the ground except for at the end. Um, out back we have four hoop houses that come all the way down, but they're still a greenhouse because they have heat and ventilation and all that. Versus a high tunnel, which a is... A high tunnel wouldn't have the, the heat and the ventilation. So they're a temporary structure? Correct. Okay, gotcha. So when someone's growing in a high tunnel, they're not doing it in the wintertime here, they're not doing it early I mean, they, they could. You know, I mean, like most places, like Canico Farm would leave their high tunnels up year-round. It's just they wouldn't necessarily be, and I think they do use them to a degree in the winter. Okay, gotcha. They're just more of a temporary structure versus yeah. greenhouse, which is more permanent. Okay, yeah. well that's a yeah. nice little information and all. Yeah. So what do you guys? You guys always uh, you guys sell fruits and vegetables? And we do. We um we buy in fruit. We don't have, we don't grow any fruit ourselves. Um, we do sell fruit trees at the store, but it takes a long time to. Sure, sure. Um, sure, those ones seven years ago when you moved to town that you may have planted. Yeah, probably yeah. just bearing fruit <laughs> fruit now, huh? Uh, but yeah, so we, yeah, but like the, um, we do a lot of peppers, tomatoes, uh, zucchini, cucumbers, all that kind of stuff, kind of the standard stuff. Some, um, uh, yeah, I notice you guys always have seasonings. Yeah, we always have the herbs. Yeah. Um, they're, they're pretty big up here. Uh, everybody likes to see them. Yeah. So, yeah. The, uh, citronella, keeping the mosquitoes away? Yeah, we're starting to run a little low on that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that stuff works awesome. Yeah. I hear. <laughs> um, you guys also, and then flowers, those are big. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. Hanging yeah. baskets and, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, flats, individual pots. We do a lot of perennials. Um, we probably do, I think it's over, I think it's over 10, maybe closer to 12,000 perennials we do a year that we raise ourselves. Gotcha. Um, so it's... And that's just at the farmer's market? No, well, it's at the greenhouse. Oh, the both. Thing. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Collectively. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, that's a lot of plants no, to be no, selling I, here. I don't sell 10,000 here, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we always have a good collection up here. I kind of, like for the market, I always try and pick stuff that's in flower that, you know. Right. You know, the, that'll be a little showier for people for... Sure, those uh, those grade A eggs versus the uh, the the B yeah, class well, ones that they're and, and, and timing it for the right time of year too, you know. Right. You know, like um, like I just started bringing Gallardia, for example, because it just started to flower. Gotcha. I have no <laughs> idea what that is. Uh, <laughs> little red and yellow flower. Oh, okay. I didn't know Black Eyed Susie's until you sh until I bought a hanging <laughs> basket off you last year. So 
Hey. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So, um, it's all what you like, too. It's not, you, just because you don't know the name of a plant doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. You're right. No, sure. No, I hear you. Um, you have issues with birds? Or do the greenhouses kind of keep most of the critters out? We have issues with birds. Birds? Okay. Yeah, there's constantly birds building nests in the greenhouses. Really? Okay. Actually, now it's sticking to me like Home Depot and Agways and any of your generic like chain yeah chain they stores. Have birds in there. They always yeah because they're big warehouses. Yeah. But our roof opens up, so, so they like, just, they've got like free. It's not like like at Home Depot they'll be like trapped in there. Right, they have like, freedom to come. Yeah, and go. they come and go. Like they just they make it their home. And they they eat out. any of your plants at all, or no? They usually just make a mess. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's, it's not the. I was gonna say I, I the reason I brought it up was I just recently had an issue with birds. I keep trying to figure out who's attacking my uh, my sunflowers out in my yard. And then the other day I walked out and I thought it was the cats. I think one of them was a high school kid walked by, pulled it out, because um, it was pretty big. Once they get big enough, they leave them alone. And then uh, I saw went out there the other day and I watched a bird just dart right into the earth, pull the sunflower out, and grab a worm and just take off. Really? Yeah. Like, these little guys, they have like some sonar or something. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they got him. So you right where it was, huh? Exactly. So it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, we get once in a great while we'll get woodchucks in there. Oh, okay. Um, which can be an issue. Chipmunks tend to be our biggest culprit. Gotcha. You can't really shoot them either because you, yeah, yeah, you get to crack flower pots and uh, yeah. put well, holes in the, the customers around. Yeah. <laughs> you got to hunt them at night, <laughs> yeah, early morning, right? You get their tags a, and yeah, it's not a good. Uh, we actually, a couple years, we've got the, like I said, we've got the greenhouses out back that come down to the ground. Well, the sides, there's a knee wall, so it's about three foot high. Right. And then the side rolls up probably four foot from there. So from like three foot to seven foot, eh, it's probably six foot. There's open. And like our big t- patio tomatoes, the deer would come up. And just eat right out of them. And they'd grab the plant and pull it right out and then eat it. <laughs> so we're like, all right, we're going to fix this. So we pulled them all in. Then the deer took to walking right down the center aisle of the greenhouse, going right inside to do it. <laughs> you can wait for them to go outside to shoot them, right? You gotta get your permits. You gotta get your nuisance permit. Yep. Okay. Yep. There you go. You don't need tags for that, though. You just get a permit. No, they give you, like, you... Oh, you, you get, get a series of yeah, tags yeah, if you yeah, need you, more? Like, hey, I've got a, yeah, got a you litany gotta, of deer up here. Yeah, you gotta call and get more. If then you, you know. take them down to John, and he knows a guy who processes them for you, and... Yeah, we usually do it ourselves. Oh, yeah? Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it works. Self-sufficiency. I'm a, I'm a rugged individualist, so I'm I'm all for the. What was that? Roosevelt? I think so. Teddy Roosevelt, yeah. the rugged individualism. Yeah, that's. Was that Frank? No, not, I don't think it was FDR. Because uh, Teddy also was the one who did was big into like state parks and oh, preservation yeah, absolutely. And stuff. Yeah, and conservation. So, yeah. I was thinking rugged individualism was more after World War II. Maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. Look I into could, it. I could be very wrong. Look into it. <laughs> Wish we had Nancy floating around here. We could, we could bug her. She'd remember. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I get a little in depth with like each business, not just what do you have. It's more like with with Mark. He was telling me about uh, you know slugs. We were talking about soil content, mm-hmm. things like that. So. Yeah. But, yeah, you gotta dig in a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Works. You know, it's. Uh, um, stay busy. You're off the beaten path. Yeah, we are. But we're, you have to be though. But it actually works out. We actually do. We draw a lot from Salamanca and Bradford out there. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, because the 219 runs right in there. Yeah. Because so. um, Salamanca doesn't have much out their way. They've got like I think it's one. There's one little greenhouse out there, and then Bradford has a couple. But we still draw a lot. Sell tobacco there. plants. We used to. Really? Yeah. I was gonna say, cause you catch them going right to the res. You stop them and I, hey, I got my own one. You can go. You want to grow it yourself? We'll even show you. We, we, we used to. Um, we used to grow them. They, um, it's real disease susceptible. Oh really? Yeah. So we kind of. Can you GMO it? It's fizzled. Genetically, I can't. <laughs> genetically modify it so that. Well, on the, on the commercials on TV, they say that the big tobacco already is doing it. So. So yeah. Well, I mean. I mean, I don't, I don't put c- cigarettes. I don't put on the uh, the Weight Watchers program. You know, the the health, the, the Atkins diet. They don't talk about cigarettes. So, I mean, I guess it can be sprayed with pesticides because they put formaldehyde in it, don't they? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. But I think they they must be regulated. They got. I mean, they it have has to, be. to be. Yeah. We were just talking about drinking gasoline. If, it, if you can. 
Well, we're trying to up the and we're trying to up the standard, you know, like real men get drunk and black out and go to work the next morning. My uncle's dad used to wash his mouth out Listerine. Yeah. Clorox bleach. Very white teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Stinky gums, I bet. Yeah. We were just we were just talking about that as in a you know like the real men. You know, we shots of gasoline and we do key bumps to ground up glass and you know just to just to throw off people. But we figured that would be a, you know, just gotta raise the bar a little bit. You know, <laughs> but we we're just doing some research and uh, I guess you die after a half an ounce, so you'd have to do like baby shots. So, like, really? Yeah. You get drunk on a, drunk on a, a quarter ounce or something. I mean, cause like, um, you remember siphon gas? And I'm not talking like out of gas, you know, like not. Yeah, like, no, yeah, no, you feel a little like, loopy after siphon. Well, you know, you get a blast. You get a mouthful mouth of it, you're like, oh. It's like the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why only real men do it. <laughs> <It's>, <Cool. laughs> see, tangents, those are nice. Yeah. That's, yeah. So. A little bit of uh, color. Yeah, that's by, right. By the way, Herbert Hoover was rugged individualism. All right, Thank cool. Thank you. Fact-checking. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was also the one trying to keep people sane while they were living in Hoovervilles because they were all, like, homeless. That, so they're like... And that kind of makes sense, too. Though. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta fend for yourself living in a tent. Yeah. <laughs> Hoovervilles. They also used to load their shotguns with rock salt. Get rid of the vagrants, you know. They, oh, I believe, just, yeah. yeah. They fill their buck shots with rock salt and just, get out my property. Shoot them. Just to, you know. Yeah. You pepper, you pepper some rock salt in someone's ass, they're not going to put up a tent I'm not coming back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's got to be a better place. Go live in the woods. <laughs> Grow my own vegetables. Kill my own deer. <laughs> So. Speaking of which, uh, how how was your turkey dinner? Turkey dinner was not uh, was not too tasty. Too much ground up glass. <laughs> That's where I got the idea though for the key bumps. So it was, uh, <laughs> when that turkey hit us yesterday, dead center of the windshield. It's an impressive. Uh, yeah, it was an impressive blast. Impressive I'm glad that damage. it six inches lower. That turkey would be sitting in the seat with us. Yeah. So. But I didn't come through. It didn't really penetrate. It just threw a bunch of little shards. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, and ran the expressway. Yeah, yeah, right outside of Binghamton, yeah. east east side of Binghamton, heading just about to get off 88. So you had to be moving. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> and I mean we were hauling tools from Albany, so I mean we're the van was loaded. It was like a hippopotamus weight rolling down the road. So that turkey might have been a little cannonball, but not taking out the hippo. <laughs> so and uh, yeah, it, yeah, it scared the crap out of us, and you know nothing the washing machine couldn't fix. So. <laughs> That's how they test airplane windshields, isn't it? They, they shit on them? They shoot frozen turkeys at them. Oh, really? Okay. I was going to say. They, <laughs> I don't think they shit on them. No, it's diuretic. <laughs> they eat this watermelon. <laughs> yeah. um, so what do you think of the market? I, You've I, been, what, two or three years now? Second. This is my second season. So it's good. You're on the board. So I'm on the board. Be, so uh, I haven't taken any complaints, though. Yeah. So. I'm good with that. It's different than being alderman, you know. Where when you're an alderman, everyone's, you know, you get you get a call. Hey, my neighbor's being a jerk, and I got to go like, I'm like the yeah. bouncer at a wedding, like I deal with inner inner uh, inner office skirmishes and stuff, you know. Yeah, it's. I feel like you don't get a lot of complaints here. No, no, it's usually you know, stuff that we usually handle in house. Like, yeah. hey, that guy's onions don't cost a lot. We'll fix oh, it. Okay. Yeah, or. Or there's a stray dog here. We catch it and get rid of it. You know, so it's... <laughs> Somebody does anyway. Yeah, right? <laughs> we usually, uh... It's not too bad. It's usually just, you know... Hey, are you gonna... You ran out of coffee. Oh, got more coming. That's <laughs> it's on most, its way. It's, yeah, it's most on a case-by-case -case basis. So... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like there's not a whole lot of general complaints. You're right. It's more of an individual type thing. Yeah. So you more... And you got a nice little setup, place to yeah. sit. Yeah. Have a cup of coffee. Microphone towards the so end of the towards the middle of the market. The microphone uh, kind of scares people away. They think they're on camera, and they. Well, they are. Yeah, they, well, they are now. <laughs> 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 but. Yeah. Oh, and, and Nancy is here. So. Hey, I saw, I saw yeah, yeah, she is here. So, but we we had Eric give us the the, the forecast on Hoover, Hoover uh, Herbert Hoover. So uh, maybe next. Maybe next time we'll come up with a new question. We'll, we'll ask Nancy section of the show. That's ask Nancy. She needs her own segment. Yeah. That's what she needs to do. How did uh, 
How did SNAP benefits come originally? I remember when they used to, you pick them up at the post office, they had stamps. <laughs> they were actually stamps. Uh. <laughs> you lick it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There was no such thing as a strolly and you. There was a couple people walking up and down the streets with bags of brown paper bagging. That was it. And we talked about problems. It's two separate beds for families. Warden, warden one bed, June Cleaver in the other. That was. <laughs> yeah, you know that way you don't have to steal in covers. There's no issues. That's right. That's... Puts Planned Parenthood to, to <laughs> perspective, though, right? You got to actually plan to push the beds together. That's a lot of extra de deterring. <laughs> it's not worth it tonight. <laughs> it's been a long week, honey. The beds just pushing it. You got all these damn shoe boxes under there. I'm not gonna slide those over too, so don't trip on them or crush your shoes. It's, it's good. There's some planning. It was a strategy back in the day. Well. Not like got, that anymore, is it, Kevin? No, it's not. No. You got another one on the way, right? Do you really? Yeah. What's that going to make? Half dozen? <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's cheaper that way. <laughs> I'm trying to bring grocery stores back. I was telling Steph about this. How old grocery stores used to have a uh, playpen in the back for the kids. Yeah. Moms used to go shopping, and the dads used to sit in the back and drink near the playpen. They used to actually have a bar that served booze in the back. Really? Yeah. In like the 19, when was this? 1950s, somewhere really? in there. Yeah, like they, your average grocery store used to have all that because it was family. They take the whole family out. You load all the kids up. Mom didn't want to handle all the kids. So you and throw then some of the pay, play pen. Throw, yeah, so you throw some of the play pen. Mom gets to go shopping in peace, and Dad gets to go just have a drink. Have a drink. Talk with the guys. You know, that was the that was the way of things back then. So makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Just bring that back. Two ice cubes. And then, uh, but I got to convince Parking Shop and uh, Tops to actually have a uh, liquor license. Yeah, liquor license. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. Got anything else, Matt? No, yeah, you're doing pretty good. Cool, man. You? That was painless, right? Yeah. 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 Tell yeah. your friends. Tell Mark Prince. All right. <laughs> you gotta get Jeanette. You gotta get a net. Jeanette. Oh, oh Jeanette. <laughs> we'll have wine next week. Oh, it does matter. Sounds like it'd be way better that way. Yeah, right? He hasn't been to the market in a couple years. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, convince him. Who? Who hasn't been to the market in a couple years? Sam. Yeah. He's come. But then would that mean you didn't come? I think you should still come. Yeah, somebody's got to have to run the booth. Yeah. Somebody's got to run the booth. Someone's going to have to BS with this guy. So. But uh, hey. thanks, thanks for coming on the podcast, thanks. Matt. We'll see you here at the market every Saturday from uh, from eight, eight to, to one. one. Yep. Eight to one. Stairs is usually the last trailer to pull off because they're the biggest trailer. Uh, all the flowers and stuff. Gotta, I'm just slow. Yeah. <laughs> Got to back up. I usually don't move. So. <laughs> but uh, thanks, man. Hey, thank you. No problem. We'll see you next time. Absolutely.